Welcome everyone. My name is Josef Schlacher and I'm a PhD student in Material Science at the Montana University of Lyon in Austria. My PhD project, I'm focusing on the mechanical characterization of complex ceramic architectures. Today, I'm going to talk about how fractography can be used as a tool to identify typical features in ceramics printed in different directions. The aim of this work is to measure the strength of additive manufactured alumina and to study the influence of different parameters on the strength distributions. During this presentation, I would like to address some important questions. First of all, what is the influence of a lower or higher selected sintering temperature on the strength of 3D printed alumina? Secondly, I'm going to describe how the choice of the testing direction in relation to the printing direction may influence the strength. Furthermore, I would like to address if we can expect differences by investigating sample sets with different surface conditions. And last but not least, results from diaxial testing of 3D printed ceramics will be compared with uniaxial testing results. To answer these questions, Fractographic analysis will be used to observe the manufacturing related defect populations. In general, low resistance to crack propagation often causes spontaneous and catastrophic failure of ceramic parts and components, as can be seen here, for instance. The brittle nature of ceramics can be associated with the immobility of dislocations and the low elasticity during the fracture. This brittle fraction ceramic part starts from small flaws, either located at the surface or the volume. For instance, such defects can be generated during handling, in the production process, or also in service. Therefore, photography can be used to assess the quality of structural and functional ceramics and to understand the origin and location of critical flaws. So how can we link let's say, the critical defect size of, with the strength of advanced ceramics. As already mentioned, fracture of ceramics starts from defects, which can be described as cracks according to the linear elastic fracture mechanics. If the stress intensity factor K at the crack tip reaches or exceeds, exceeds the fracture toughness of the material K1C, failure will occur. The critical defect says AC, or let's say the square root of the critical defect says is indirect proportional to the failure stress. Since defects differ in their size, shape, and location, ceramic cannot be described with a single value. Therefore, the failure stress of a sample set are plotted together with the probability of failure. <clears throat> in the so called viral diagram, to describe the strength distribution, we generally can extract two different parameters. The first one is the so-called viable modulus, which is a mesh of scattering matching. A low scattering means a high viable modulus. And the characteristic strength, which is the second one, which is the strength where approximately 63% fails. <clears throat> For this research, all samples were produced by using the lithography based ceramic manufacturing technology. In general, this process takes advantage of the photo curability of the slurry, which consists of a homogeneously dispersed ceramic border within a polymer matrix and enables the layer by layer fabrication of ceramic architectures. Different samples containing the same aluminum slurry but with different printing direction, sintering parameters, as well as surface conditions were investigated. Here, this figure shows schematically the printed L shaped geometry and the different printing directions X, Y, and Z, indicating the corresponding layer center with respect to those printing directions. For instance, in Z direction, Y, and X. <clears throat> in order to test the samples on the uniaxial bending, start and bend bars were cut out of the sample geometry. So it is important to mention that the loading direction or let's say the applied stress fluid must be related to those different printing directions, X, Y, and Z. To answer the first address question, 
So what is the influence of the sintering temperature? Two different types were characterized. The first sample was sintered at lower temperature, 1,500 degrees, and exhibited a relative density of approximately 96%. The individual layer thickness in the sample was approximately 40 microns after sintering. It can be seen that this material has a relatively fine-grained microstructure and it exhibits a level of high porosity, especially at the interfaces. One can expect that these weak interfaces may compromise the strength in one specific printing direction. In contrast to that, sample B was sintered at higher temperature, 1650, with a relative density of approximately 98%. The printed layer thickness was again 40 microns after sintering. The microstructure is more homogeneous than the sample layer with rather larger grains, approximately 4 microns, but the lower amount of porosity associated with the higher sintering temperature so that the layers are not visible anymore. For the sample sintered at lower temperature, we consider the strength distribution as a gear effect on the printing direction x, y, and z on the strength uh, distributions. The characteristic strength in x and y is relatively high, approximately 500 megapascals, which can be related to the rather fine grained microstructure. However, the characteristic strength in z direction is significantly lower that of the specimens in X and Y. In order to understand these findings, we are going to take a look on a few fracture surfaces. This image shows typical defects that caused the failure in the LCM alumina sample. In many cases, the reason was failure in X and Y, relatively large bores, which were trapped between two adjacent layer in X or Y direction. The size is rather uniform, extending approximately one layer thickness, 40 microns. <clears throat> However, the scatter and strength may be also related to the different position of this volume pores in the specimen. So whether it is more located at the surface or directly at the volume. This defect um, found in the specimen from the sample seen at a lower temperature the weak set configuration was a delaminated um, area between two printing layers. Since this defect, of, uh, this defect size is much larger than bores, strength in set configuration is significantly lower than in X and Y. But these pronounced delaminations were also found in X and Y direction. <clears throat> in this specimen, the load of the stress field was applied parallel to the layer boundaries, and thus possible um, inhomogeneities were, were not responsible for failure. So this finding indicates that depending on the direction of the applied stress field, whether it is perpendicular or parallel to the layers, um, the specific defects can limit the strength of a specimen as set direction or remain uncritical as in y direction or in x direction. For the sample, saying that at higher temperature, the difference in strength distribution between X, Y, and Z configuration is almost negligible, with a lower uh, strength for the later. Letter. The strength is significantly lower in all directions, which may be related to the cursor microstructure. If we compare the strength distribution of the sample seen at higher temperature with the one seen at lower temperature, we can see that the viral modulus is rather high. This can be seen on these deeper lines in comparison to the other one. This fracture surface show typical defects found in the sample seen at higher temperature with a machine surface. The failure origin, where in a few cases such, such small subsurface bores or more frequently such grinding defects at the surface associated with the machining process. Some information on this influence of machining will be shown in the next few slides. The, this defect size correlates with the size of the Meyer diamond grid 
used by the grinding wheel, for instance. So in this regard, machining defects are rather uniform in size, which can be explained the relatively low scattering strength of what we have seen before. In order to investigate the influence of the surface condition of the tested sample, one additional sample set was sintered at higher temperature with aspirated uh, stencil surfaces. The top slides show two different magnifications corresponding to the machine surface and the aspirated stencil surface. So the wave like structure can be seen here is associated with the printing process. The wavelength observed between one tail to another is approximately 40 microns, which is the, <clears throat> the, the layer thickness. It is likely that this kind of structure is formed due to an overexposure of the polymer at the free edges of the part, which occurs when very thick layers are printed. The surface of the machine specimens accomplished to that appears relatively smooth. As already stated, the difference in the strength distribution between X, Y, and Z is almost negligible with slightly lower strength for the Z direction. <clears throat> for the sample seen at higher temperature with aspirin the tensile surface, the difference in the strength distribution between X and Y is also almost negligible, but with a stronger degree in Z direction. The viral modulus of the sample is slightly lower. This regard a positive effect of the surface machining on the strength parameters can be seen. To understand these findings, fracture surfaces also on printed specimen will be explained here. Figure shows, also those figures show typically fracture surfaces of the sample as printed with a wave like structure. It's already Mentioned wave like surface were responsible for failure, especially on the y direction where the stress width is parallel to the layers, or in z direction where the stress width is perpendicular. When tested in y configuration, uh, such waves and the grooves between the waves do not necessarily compromise the strength. However, when tested in z direction, the applied stress width is perpendicular to those grooves. And consequently, they may act as stress concentrators, which reduce the strength, especially if additional damage, such artifacts, can be found on those printed surfaces. Since these features are relatively uniform in size, they yield a low scattering strength. Slightly lower strength in set configuration is a consequence of this damage inside those grooves. So to summarize, machining can remove such structures which yield to a lower scatter of the distribution. So last but not least, the difference between uniaxial and biaxial tested samples will be discussed in detail. For this study, disc-shaped samples are similar at higher temperature fabricated with relative density of 98%. In those samples, the thickness was approximately 20 microns after sintering. The choice of the thinner the layer thickness should avoid the formation of the wavy structure and should appear a smooth um, aspirated surface. Since it could shown that this effect of the printing direction, the X and Y configuration is almost negligible, we decided to fabricate those disks with two different printing directions standing, where the layers are arranged like here, and lying direction. For testing the disks on the biaxial bending, the samples without further machining were tested by using the ball and free ball test. In this ball and free ball test, the strength is defined as the maximum stress at the midpoint of the tensile sets of the specimens. The microstructure of the sample is also the before of the samples in the higher temperature were um, more homogeneous with rather larger grains in contrast to the sample sample at lower temperature. This fracture surface shows a broken disk uh, by using the bottom report test. Although the strength of the sample was measured on aspirin the disks, no wavy structure can be seen at the surface. Only a few bigger grains directly located at the surface of the disk can be responsible for failure as indicated by those errors. If we compare the bottom 
for our three balls strength data with the unix one, it can be seen that for the sample with aspirin the surface, there's a slightly difference in the strength distribution between S and L configuration. The viral motor loss is rather high and similar for both configuration. The high viral motor loss in those samples may be related to the testing condition VXL bending, where edge effects are like edge effects on their cast and or the smaller size of the printing layers, 20 microns, are limited to the natural defect size, which I mean, remember, if you remember the wrapped bores before. To summarize the results and findings, there is a diagram which shows the viral models over the, character, over the characteristic strength of all samples. Now I would like to answer again to address questions. Is there an influence of the sintering temperature? Yes. High sintering temperature means a similar strength in all printing directions, with a much lower scatter, scatter and higher viral modulus. Only the strength in X and Y direction is slightly lower than compared to the one sintered at lower temperature, which can be seen here. Furthermore, we found that there is more or less a correlation between printing direction and testing direction. Therefore, we need to keep this in mind for the mechanical characterization. In addition, the positive effect of the machining process on the strength results was stated. And last but not least, printing discs with higher sintering temperature and thinner printing layers tested on the BXL banding yield to orientation independent strength with a low scatter. In conclusion, we can say that additive manufacturing of ceramics does need much more consideration of parameters than conventional ceramic processing. So all the results on which was shown here can be found in the paper which was published at the Journal of European Ceramic Society. So at the end, I would like, we would like to acknowledge the financial support by FFG within the project at Manu and to acknowledge the financial support by ESC Grant Sarah Text. So thank you for your attention.